Hi and welcome. In this short video I'm going to show you how quickly you can get a new plugin going using DLI Core and DLI DevTools. DLI Core is a framework for creating robust object-oriented plugins for OS class and DLI DevTools is a set of tools built on top of DLI Core aimed at making development of plugins easier and faster for you. Both the DLI Core and the DLI DevTools development package can be downloaded from the OS class marketplace for free. So, in order to get a new plugin going using uh, a new <laughs> DLI Core based plugin uh, going, uh, under the excuse me, under the DLI DevTools plugin, uh, there is a bin folder. And in that bin folder, there is a DLI helper script. And one of the possible methods that DLI helper provides is the option to create a plugin. So let's do that. Create plugin. And as you can see here, it takes a few arguments. It wants the internal name. And the internal name is reflected in, in uh, the namespace used for the, uh, the plugin, uh, the class names used uh, for your plugin, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so let's just give that DLI foo bar, for example, and then you have the plugin name, and that is the the visible plugin name, uh, the plugin name that the user will see in the uh, OS class admin area when uh, they are going to install a plugin. So let's just call it the foo oops, foo bar oh, plugin. Uh, likewise, the description is the small description visible inside the uh, the OS class admin area. So we can just have some short description here. This is a cool plugin. Uh, then you set the author, and that is also uh, that is reflected in the index.php file of your uh, of your plugin. Um, and also visible in the installation uh, page on the OS class admin area. So let's just set that to me. Uh, this is also reflected in the uh, language file that is created as the primary author, author of that uh, language file. Uh, and then we set a support email. Uh, and this support email address is used so that people are able to request support directly from you uh, from inside a um, uh, uh, a support form uh, that is provided by DLI Core. And so all uh, plugins based on uh, built on top of DLI Core uh, have the ability to, to provide this uh, contact form. Uh, and if you do not specify anything here, uh, then uh, that will not be an option for your users. But let's do that for this one, and we can use the one I normally use when I create OS class plugins. So as you support that, uh, like that. So this is the only thing you have to do, then you hit enter, and it creates the plugin for you. So it created the plugin called DLI foobar. It set up a directory structure with controllers and views and fragments, a language file, and so on and so forth. Um, I will go into all of these in more detail uh, in another video. Uh, but we can quickly just check it out. So here we have the structure. Um, we have the index file that is set up to handle everything that it needs. Uh, it checks that OS class is loaded and so on and so forth. Then it sets all of the normal information here that you normally set in your index file. So that is visible to the OS class system. Uh, here are the author that we set. Here's the short name that we set. The internal name is the short name here. Uh, also, it makes sure that 
DLI core exists and is installed. If it's not, it will present your user with an error message when it they try to install this plugin and uh, directing them to where they can download and install DLI core. Uh, if DLI core is installed, then it uh, your plugin basically uh, registers the namespace with the autoloader, so and uh, creates an instance of your plugin and registers that with the uh, DLI core plugin manager. Uh, if we look at let's see here, we can take Nano instead at the actual. Uh, plugin class. You can see it here. It's quite bare right now, but it resides under the namespace DLI foobar. That is the internal name that we gave it. Uh, the name of the plugin also contains DLI foobar, the internal name. So it is the internal name and uh, then plugin afterwards. Uh, and it extends our uh, the plugin class of DLI core. In this init function here, you can do things like uh, registering um, tables that the plugin owns, registering controllers that it's going to use, register different dependencies it has on other plugins, and so on and so forth, that are used uh, during installation to check that all the dependencies are fulfilled, and to uh, warn uh, the user if uh, your plugin has a dependency on some other plugin that might not be installed, installed, and so on and so forth. Um, the support email that was set earlier is here, and then we have two hooks: uh, the install hook and uninstall hook. Uh, they are ran. Uh, the install hook runs during the uh, the installation of your plugin. So if you have any specific code that you want to run during the installation, you can do that here. Uh, and also, when uninstalling, if you have any specific code, you can write that in this function here. Uh, note that for DLI core, you do not have to, uh, you know, create all of the uh, ta uh, uh, the database tables that you want to use in the install hook like you might be used to, uh, nor will you have to remove them in the uninstall hook. Uh, instead, uh, you create tables in DLI core uh, using um, uh, table objects that you register with the plugin, and when a plugin is installed, then all of the registered tables are created and when you uninstall, uh, all of the registered tables are automatically uh, removed. Uh, the same goes for, for emails, preferences, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that is pretty much it for now. This is, as I said, very bare bones right now. Uh, we have a few, a few more things that are uh, uh, automatically created for you here. Like under the controllers, you have an admin controller. Uh, but I think that we will look at this in more depth in another video instead. Uh, so this is basically all you have to do to get a new plugin up and running. This plugin, as it is now, is visible inside the uh, the uh, OS class admin area. You are able to install it and uninstall it. So everything works. Uh, just the, uh, the way it's supposed to with a plugin in its current state. But we can, of course, add you know, much more functionality to this plugin. And we will take a look at that in, in a following video. So until then, take care.